very good morning to you all, to the Mayor of Nantwich, Councillor Stuart Bostock, uh, councillors and representatives of other towns and of agencies and so forth in our town that keep its life going and serve us in many different ways. A uh, very warm welcome to you all today for this civic service. After a brief interlude at the end of this service, there will be a short said service of Holy Communion for those who wish to stay for that. There are notice sheets available at the back of church. I'll just highlight one or two. As many of you will know, the COP26 UN Climate Change Conference begins next weekend. Uh, St Mary's bells will be rung on Saturday. Uh, following a walk by Sustainable Nantwich. And on Sunday, we're hoping to raise awareness by making our services carbon neutral. And um, to do that, uh, we will encourage people to walk or cycle or car share if that's possible. I'm going to walk. Um, and uh, you uh, may um, give a... We reckon that a donation of a pound per person will offset the carbon. Uh, so there'll be an opportunity for that. It's long term. We have an eco church group that will work on this, but this is simply to raise awareness. And at the back of church, there are various things to sign up for: the Living and Love and Faith course, the Big Quiz Night, and um, the All Souls service on the 7th of November uh, for remembrance of loved ones. And the same evening, it, the Tree of Light will be lit. So for the Tree of Light baubles, it's a civic hall to go for and for names to be read in our All Souls service, there's a sheet at the back of the church. And so we gather and we continue in worship as we give thanks for our life together in this town, as we look to God for his help and strength and hope for the future, as we gather to hear his word and to bring our prayers and praises. standing to sing the hymn Immortal Invisible, God Only Wise.
Come, all you who are thirsty, come to the waters. And you who have no money, come buy and eat. Come buy wine and milk without money and without cost. Why spend money on what is not bread and your labour on what does not satisfy? Listen, listen to me and eat what is good and you will delight in the richest of fare. Give ear and come to me, listen that you may live. I will make an everlasting covenant with you, my faithful love promised to David. See, I have made him a witness to the peoples, a ruler and a commander of the people. Surely you will summon nations you know not, and nations you do not know will come running to you because of the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, for he has endowed you with splendor. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call on him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake their ways and the unrighteous their thoughts. Let them turn to the Lord and he will have mercy on them and to our God for he will freely pardon. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, declares the Lord. As the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. As the rain and the snow come down from heaven, and do not return to it without watering the earth and making it bud and flourish, so that it yields seed for the sower and bread for the eater, so is my word that goes out from my mouth. It will not return to me empty, but will accomplish what I desire and achieve the purpose for which I sent it. Here endeth the lesson. Let us stand as the choir sing the Te Deum.
A reading from St. John's Gospel, chapter 5. The works that the Father has given me to finish, the very works that I am doing, testify that the Father has sent me. And the Father who sent me has himself testified concerning me. You have never heard his voice, nor seen his form, nor does his word dwell in you, for you do not believe the one he sent. You study the scriptures diligently because they think that in them you have eternal life. These are the very scriptures that, se- that testify about me, yet you refuse to come to me to have life. I do not accept glory from human beings, but I know you. I know that you do not have the love of God in your hearts. I have come in my Father's name, and you do not accept me. But if someone else comes in his own name, you will accept him. How can you believe, since you accept glory from one another, but do not seek the glory that comes from the only God? But do not think I will accuse you before the Father. Your accuser is Moses, on whom your hopes are set. If you believed Moses, you would believe me, for he wrote about me. But since you do not believe what he wrote, how are you going to believe what I say? This is the word of the Lord. Let us stand.
I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Lord, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Blessed Lord, who hast caused all holy scriptures to be written for our learning, grant that we may in such wise hear them, read, mark, learn, and inwardly digest them, that by patience and comfort of thy holy word, we may embrace and ever hold fast the blessed hope of everlasting life, which thou hast given us in our Saviour Jesus Christ. Amen. O God, who art the author of peace and lover of concord, in knowledge of whom standeth our eternal life, whose service is perfect freedom, defend us, thy humble servants, in all assaults of our enemies, that we, surely trusting in thy defence, may not fear the power of any adversaries, through the might of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. O Lord, our heavenly Father, almighty and everlasting God, who hast safely brought us to the beginning of this day. Defend us in the same with thy mighty power, and grant that this day we fall into no sin, neither run into any kind of danger, but that all our doings may be ordered by thy governance, to do always that is righteous in thy sight, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.
May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. In the Old Testament lesson that our mayor read, we heard that image from the prophet Isaiah of the rains from heaven, which don't return to the heavens without first watering the earth and enabling growth. And that's what we hope for anyway. And similarly, so the point of that image is, God's word won't return empty either, but it will come to us and achieve its purpose. They say that the best kind of rain is the steady, consistent sort, don't they? Rather than, um, you know, a deluge every now and then, which can dry out quickly before it's even got chance to soak into the ground. And so we may, we may ask, what is that word that can inspire us, that can feed us on a regular basis in our hearts and minds and souls, and enable us to prosper and to grow? We may ask, what has been that word which has helped Nantwich down the centuries to prosper, as indeed it, is, it has, and uh, sustained itself? and been able to be the town that it is today. Because it's not been without its setbacks, has it, Nantwich, if you look through its history. The Black Death in the 14th century, which delayed the building of this for a very long time. The Great Fire of 1583. The Civil War and the Battle of Nantwich in 1644. The Cholera Epidemic in 1849. And, of course, the First and Second world wars and most recently the pandemic which we hope we are coming through now what has sustained Nantwich through all this we may speak of the advantages of geography and so forth that are there but what has been the spiritual refreshing rain what has nurtured people's souls and spirits what's given hope and purpose of course, the culture in those past centuries has been fundamentally Christian, and the church has been at the heart of public life uh, through most of those centuries, including education and health in earlier centuries. We may think about what a former rector from here did during the cholera epidemic just in the 19th century. And we may think of that great fire in this town. And we've all seen that photograph of St. Paul's Cathedral in the Blitz, haven't we? Where the dome stands above all the smoke. Imagine what it would have been like looking from the weaver up towards the church in that fire that night when just about every building east of the river was on fire and the church wasn't that kind of stood above it. Now, of course, that's not by some special preservation of God. Well, Churches can get bombed and burned like any others. But things like that can be a sign, can't they, of uh, something permanent and enduring to give hope for the future. That's why Notre Dame, um, I'm not Catholic, I'm not French, but when I saw it burning, you feel that something's you know, threatened, that means something to us and has been foundational to our life. It's being rebuilt as it was. Today, of course, is very different, and we don't have the latest census data that we've all done in this last year. But it's likely that when the data does come through, probably um, nearly half uh, of our town don't call themselves Christians today. And so we may ask, why do we have a civic service? Why do we have an event that's meant to kind of embrace the whole of the town's life in some sense? that is specifically Christian in this church? Well, the short answer that we might give is that the church is still established in our land and the queen is the defender of the faith. The long answer is too long to give now. And uh, the long answer might question whether that establishment is still a good thing and that's worth us pondering. But one question worth pondering when we consider the tradition of our town and of our society and how we got here, is the fact that our thinking in 
in recent times, recent centuries actually, has been very influenced by the idea of progress and evolution and science. The kind of thinking uh, that's there in those words of Isaac Newton who said that he could see further than others because, because he stood on the shoulders of those who went before. And in, when we're talking about science, that is how it works. It's cumulative. Today's scientists know more than yesterday's, and that's how it builds, because it's principally objective study, and one generation adds on that of another. But what about those more fundamental aspects of our lives? The wisdom of us as individuals, the wisdom of us politically, our choices, our desires and habits, the kind of environment that we create for our children to grow up in. Is it always one way, progress, where we always leave behind what is better than what went before, where we are always wiser than the previous generation? I think it's fair to say that that is not the case. Uh, and um, there are things that we can lose and need to relearn. And that's why, one reason why we can make a good case for tradition as something which is living, like a fire we need to keep aflame today, rather than ashes that we're preserving uh, just as, a, as, a, as in a museum. And where we may see progress uh, in our time, in recent times, maybe in the rights of individuals, or the welfare of our people, or material goods, or even some of our values, we might ask, ask, might ask what's the relationship with the history by which that came about, because all that grew from what was principally a Christian base. And we can ask whether that Christian basis is like a scaffolding which can be discarded and it can all stand there without it, or is it more like a foundation which, if you chip away at it, there's the risk of it all crumbling down? Are our values something that we can just kind of derived from first principles and choose what they might be or establish them empirically as if by science. One of the reasons that so often people of other faiths like church schools and like the fact that the church is, that is established in this country is that it does mean that there's an acknowledgement of an authority to which all of us are subject. There's no one body in our nation which is the ultimate authority in that sense. Not political leaders, not scientists, not philosophers, not the church, not the queen, but all are under God, a sense that there is an authority to which we are all accountable, that we're not self-sustaining, that we need that word from beyond ourselves. And today in the church's tradition is what we call Bible Sunday, hence our hymns and readings are all centred around the theme of the Bible, and that it stands as an accumulation of wisdom down the centuries, uh, and a life-giving word, we might think, as Christians, that is like a rain from heaven that can soak into us and enable us to grow as a people. Each one of us in this town uh, need hope for the future, need something which will enable us to remain positive and hopeful and confident in the face of adversity and as our forebears have done to seek to go forwards and to maintain Nantwich and its traditions. And today we give thanks for all represented here and the service of so many and we look to God to be with us for the future. Amen. Let us stand to sing the hymn, Thou Whose Almighty Word.
Let us pray. Let us pray for our Queen, especially as she has spent time in hospital this past week. O Lord, our Heavenly Father, high and mighty King of kings, Lord of lords, the only ruler of princes, who dost from thy throne behold all the dwellers upon earth. Most heartily we beseech thee with thy favour to behold our most gracious sovereign lady, Queen Elizabeth, and so replenish her with the grace of thy Holy Spirit, that she may always incline to thy will and walk in thy way. Endue her plenteously with heavenly gifts. Grant her in health and wealth long to live. Strengthen her that she may vanquish and overcome all her enemies. And finally, after this life, she may attain everlasting joy and felicity. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us pray for our town, for the mayor and our councillors, and all who serve us. O God, who has taught us to live in the towns and, and cities of this world as knowing our citizenship to be in heaven, bless the people of this town and guide with thy heavenly wisdom the mayor, councillors, and those who bear office in the same, that they may ever keep before their eyes the vision of that city which hath foundations, whose builder and maker is God. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us pray for our nation. Almighty God, who hast wonderfully preserved and guided our nation, through the years that are past, and given us a position of responsibility in the world. Grant that we may be worthy of our high calling. Purge out from among us the sins that dishonour thee. Give us true religion, crown our faith with righteousness, and lift us up a holy people to thy praise and honour. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us pray for ourselves and our life together. Behold, O Lord our God, our strivings after a truer and more abiding order. Scatter every excuse of frailty and unworthiness. Consecrate us all with a heavenly mission. Open to us a clearer prospect of our work and give us strength according to our day gladly to welcome and fulfil it, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We stand to sing the hymn, Now Thank We All Our God.
Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up the light of his countenance upon you and give you peace. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Now sing the national anthem. 